this, uh, <laughs> we won't go there. We're going to uh, take a look now at one of the most beautiful, Buddha-filled passages in A Course in Miracles. It's from the text, and it's called The Little Garden. It is only the awareness of the body that makes love seem limited. For the body is a limit on love. The belief in limited love was its origin. It was made to limit the unlimited. The body cannot know. And while you limit your awareness to its tiny senses, you will not see the grandeur that surrounds you. The body cannot know. And while you limit your awareness to it, we miss what's going on around us. The body is a tiny fence around a little part of a glorious and complete idea. It draws a circle, infinitely small, around a little segment of heaven, splintered from the whole, proclaiming that within it is your kingdom, where God cannot enter. And within this kingdom, the ego rules, and rules cruelly. To defend this little speck of dust, it bids you fight against the universe. This fragment of your mind, and I have said this over and over again, is such a tiny part of it, could you but appreciate the whole, you would see it instantly, like the smallest sunbeam to the sun, or the faintest ripple on the surface of the ocean. And I know this one real well. In its amazing arrogance, <laughs> my arrogance, this tiny sunbeam has decided it is the sun. This almost imperceptible ripple has decided it's the ocean. When people are waiting for God to come and rescue us, please hear this now. Yet neither the sun nor ocean is even aware of all this strange and meaningless activity. They merely continue, unaware that they're feared and hated by a tiny segment of themselves. And what we think is in no way changing our total dependence on it for our being. Our whole existence remains within the spirit. Without the sun, the sunbeam would be gone. The ripple without the ocean is inconceivable. <laughs> I love that word from Princess Bride. Inconceivable. Stop saying that. Remember that in the movie? Like the sun and the ocean, yourself continues, unmindful that this tiny part regards itself as you. Do not, do not accept this little fenced off aspect of yourself. The sun and ocean are as nothing besides what you are. The sunbeam sparkles only in the sunlight, and the ripple dances as it rests upon the ocean. Yet in neither sun nor ocean is the power that rests in you. This little self is not your kingdom. I love this line. Arch high above it and surrounding it with love is the glorious whole, which offers its happiness and deep content to every part. This little aspect that you think you are is no exception. I love this line. The thought of God surrounds your little kingdom, waiting at the barrier you built to come inside and shine on barren ground. This is our story and the glory of our awakening to the walls that we have put around us that appear to keep us in and everybody else out. This separate self is the cause of all of our battles that we have with each other, all the battles that we're having with the environment. Keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. And all this energy all around us just waits for us to let down those walls. And so we have teachings that help us do that. And today's teaching is in the Bible, and I love this story. And it comes from someone named Joshua whose name means the one whom the Lord makes triumphant. That's you now. You are the one whom the Lord makes, makes triumphant. Yes, we make the sound that aligns us with the truth of our being. And so Joshua in this story is us awakening to who we are. And the process that he follows step by step is the process that we can follow to let the walls around us come tumbling down. 
because separation stinks. I hate doing the separation thing. The moment I put my walls up around her, or the kids, or my dog, or my life, or the attendance, or the this and the that, the moment I do that, in that moment, I'm cut off from my own divine self. Because there's only one God. Hero Israel, the Lord thy God is one. The moment I place myself in a separate container all by myself, my little infinitesimal ripple finally against the universe is the moment I'm cut off from the beloved energy that surrounds me and enfolds me. So this is our story. The name Joshua, by the way, has the same root meaning as the word Jesus. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> same root meaning as the word Buddha. Same root meaning as the word Krishna. Same root meaning as your own inner meaning of awakening to the thought that surrounds you, the love that surrounds you, the glory that is all around us. And so this story, again, gives us a roadmap on how to let those walls, the little ones and the big ones, come tumbling that and it starts off beautifully with first the awareness of the present moment. Joshua, Richard, Maureen, Brad, <coughs> take off your shoes. The ground upon which you stand is holy. Being present in the moment is the first step to be aware of where you are in this body. That's where it begins. We went to sleep in a body, we're going to wake up in a body. The body is the place that we do our deeper work. We allow our inner senses to become completely open to the outer sense of who it is that we are, and then our life begins to make sense. But it starts with being present in the body. And then it says this. Here's the next step. Joshua, you and I then, in this present moment, notice that there's a wall around us. That's all. Just be aware of the wall around you, trying to keep yourself in and others out. Because in that moment, you're keeping God out as well, too. In that moment, just bring awareness to the walls, where nothing gets in and nothing gets out. Just be aware that you have those walls within you, psychological walls, emotional walls. You just become aware of them in that moment. You become present with them. And then, and then the journey from that moment on, first being present, then being aware of what your walls are. And we all have different stories that wall us in. Yeah, the things that bother me don't bother you. The things that bother you, I could care less about. But I have my own walls. And in that, we are the same. And so we take a look at what those are for us. We become aware of our current city of Jericho, right? Filled with thoughts and feelings and emotions and stories that we tell over and over and over again. Just bring awareness to it. And then it says, we begin then the journey of walking very slowly and patiently around our own thought system. Quietly, mindfully, like Buddhists, like Jack Thornfield, like Thich Nhat Hanh. With every breath I take, with every step I take, I'm back in the present moment. And we just mindfully walk around that which we're usually stuck in the middle of, acting and reacting out of our arrogance and our ignorance and our fear, not responding to life, but reacting to it. We just go, oh, look, there I am doing that one again. Isn't that interesting? How different. I've been doing that one for 60 years. Gosh, it's so new. Everyone knows it. We watch. There's my story again. Mindfully, we walk around. And it says, you walk around slowly, breathing in and breathing out in the present moment. And he walks around it how many times? Seven. Oh, isn't that interesting? Seven times with seven trumpets. Seven is the number of completion. Seven actually represents 